The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey Data Freedom. Every single week, ladies, user power of engineering help you. Yes, you find things on DigiKey.com. Lady what is a great search of the week this week? I'm glad you asked. This week's great search is for a single channel level shifter. So let's go to my computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So a uh, new product that I'm working on releasing this week is our new RP2040 Prop Maker Feather. And this is designed to make it easy to do like very small, battery powered, portable robotics, animatronics projects, because that's always a good time. And on this board, um, I have like a whole bunch of stuff jammed over here. Some good stuff with the I2S amplifier. We've covered I2S amps on the Great Search. Um, there's accelerometer. I think we covered accelerometer on the Great Search too. And there's also an output for uh, NeoPixels. So on the bottom here, you can see that this is a Neo output. So um, a lot of people when they make props, especially like lightsaber type things, they want to have a string of NeoPixels controlled. And NeoPixels, uh, you can drive them off of 3.3 volts, but for the ultimate best glowiness, you want to have them um, running at 5 volts and you want the signal to also be 5 volts. Now, it is possible to do um, 5 volt power to a NeoPixel and give it data as 3.3 volts, but some older pixels don't like it. They kind of get a little flickery because, you know, the, the input voltage to trigger a high is usually 0.6 of the input um, of the power voltage. So if you had, um, you know, five volts and you're like, okay, 0.6, you know, if you're 3.3 volts, uh, you're above the 0.6 level there. And so you, you register 3.3 volt logic levels registered as high. But what happens is um, oftentimes people are powering their NeoPixels from a very good power supply. And so the power supply has a little bit of lift to it because it's meant to stay at five volts, even at very high current droops, such as uh, four amps, five amps, 10 amps. And so what happens is you get something that's maybe closer to like 5.5 volts of power to the NeoPixel. And then when you multiply that by 0.6, it's like exactly 3.3. And so your 3.3 volt logic level might work or it might be like 3.28 and it doesn't quite trigger. And so you get like, um kind of flaky behavior from the neopixel now this is all covered uh we have actually a learn guide called the uber guide so um paint your dragon wrote an amazing uh guide that's been updated constantly about logic levels and um so it's actually 0.7 i, I say 0.6 but it, it's often 0.7 and so how you really should have a logic level shifter. And so um, on the prop maker feather, because you might be powering this from a USB power plug, uh, a power supply that again gives you 5.5 volts, you want to have, and the, the new, the RP2040 is a 3.3 volt logic device. You wanna have something that shifts that data out from 3.3 up to five. Um, so, you know, some ways of doing it is, you know, if you're, uh, if you have infinite space and price is, you know, uh, important, you want to make it super cheap, you can use two transistors. The first transistor inverts from, uh, you know, 0 to 3.3 to 5 or 0. And then you have another transistor that does the second inversion. Two inversions equals uh, not inverted. And then you have 0 to 5 volts. But I had only like a tiny little itsy bitsy amount of space left over because everything else here it only came in one package. I couldn't get this uh, anything else any smaller. The I2S amp was fixed. Uh, these power transistors need to be able to switch a lot of current. Um, this uh, accelerometer was a fixed package. So I really only had space for like a SOT 70 uh, in there. So what can we do to get um, a buffer in there? So let's go to DigiKey and I want to find a non-inverting buffer let's see what we can get so there's a lot but not surprising there's a lot of chips that do um this about twelve thousand. um but let's let's try uh nailing down what we want so here's the thing we only need one channel we only need that one signal uh converted so uh first off it should be active we wanted only something in stock 
only one element and only one bit per element. So it's like one, one, one. I, I don't need a quad or a hex level shifter. We did that actually on the NeoPixelate. If you're interested in an eight channel version, uh, check out that guide. And that helps us reduce it greatly. Uh, let's go only if with surface mount. Not that there's a lot of through a whole single channel inverter. Um, what's the difference between a buffer and a transceiver? A transceiver usually has a directional pin. We don't want directional. We want a buffer. Not that there was, it looks like only one piece. Voltage supply. Okay, so this is the interesting thing. If you are level shifting with like a logic tip, you want the output voltage that you will be generating. In this case, it's five volt logic level. That's the power on the chip. Like you won't be able to get five volt logic level from a chip that's running at 3.3 volts. So we have to make sure that the power supply on this chip uh, supports five. So let's only select the voltage is here. This is like 2.7. This goes up to 3.6. This is 4.5, not high enough. Now we're only looking at those. Okay. Um, next, I want, I already kind of know what package I need. I need it to be small. So um, SC74, SOIC is not going to fit. TSOP's not going to fit. And I don't want any BGAs. SC75, that's it's like SOT235, but smaller. If you look uh, here, look at this image. So these are SOT23s, and this is a SOT235. You see, this is like, it looks just like a SOT235, but it's just like tinier. That's a SC75. So it's like a little sister of this. The SOT235 is the SC70. Um, also SC75, sometimes it's called. And there's this one that's small, the SC74. But I'm probably, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll show both. But um, I really don't want any BGA and I don't want any smaller. I don't want a DFN. I want something that's very easy to solder and easy to um, debug with. So let's look at these. And then let's also look at only things that are in stock. And I don't want to look at Marketplace. I'll just look at what's in stock at, at DigiKey right now. Output type, um, I don't want open drain. I want either push pull or CMOS. Three state, sure, you know, tri state is, is fine, no big deal. And let's take a look at what we've got here. Okay, so now scrolling down, it looks like there's, you know, this is going to be a lot of 74 logic. And as you'll see, a lot of 74 logic, um, you know, there's like a billion families from all these different vendors. Uh, you've got diodes and on semi and Nexperia and TI is going to have options and Toshiba and uh, um, not Nat Semi because they got purchased by TI. So you're going to have TI instead. Um, so there's, you'll see like a lot of like kind of duplicate parts here. But um, the next thing we want to do is figure out what series uh, we want to use. So the 74 series is important. You can't, you, you have to think about what you're going to use it for. Um, and what the input is. So we want something that'll take a low voltage and shift it up. And again, remember that if the power supply is like 5.5, 3.3 volts won't necessarily trigger it on CMOS because it's not quite above that 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volt level that it's expecting for it to be a high voltage. In that case, what you want is to have, it's CMOS logic, but you want to have TTL logic inputs. And that means that anything above a one volt is going to be considered high. And that means we can do level shifting from a low voltage, even as low as 1.8 volt logic, up to five volts. Um, so for that, first off, you know, we're not going to use the bipolar TTL family because it's high current and, and annoying. And it's also almost impossible to get these days. Uh, we want CMOS family. So the CMOS family we want, um, we want something that can do TTL. And we want something that does like fairly fast. So the original CMOS is, is fairly slow. Um, we want uh, AHC or, you know, advanced high speed, nice and fast, 5.5 uh, nanosecond timing. Um, that's nice and good. And we want, you know, it has five volt tolerance inputs, which is no big deal because we're running at 5.5 volts. Um, and then there is the T version. And this is uh, fast and TTL logic levels. And it's also equivalent to the VH 
HCT. So HCT or VHCT will do great. Uh, you can also do a ACT. I don't know the difference between AC and AHC. I guess it's a little bit slower. So I think these are two good ones because NeoPixel can be, you know, it's, it's fairly fast. Uh, so let's get some good edges on there. Look for the AHCT or VHCT family. So back here, we can search for series. So uh, let's look for uh, let's look for CT. There's HCT. There's VHCT. Doesn't look like they have it. So let's look for AHCT series. Uh, looks great. Um, and let's apply. Okay, so now we're only looking at ones that will definitely work for us. So um, there's a couple versions here. So there are like, you know, different options. So one is you can use the 17. And the 17 is like, there's just one pin that's not connected. Honestly, I probably should have used this uh, because there's not, you don't have to connect the, the third pin. You just have power ground, input, output. You're done. You're good to go. Who cares? Um, you don't have any um, signal select or anything. But, uh, and then you can see the um, input high level is, uh, this is AHC. Okay, so then we go to HCT. Okay, so the HCT version, um, hold on, HCT transfer, okay. HCT 1G 117, high level output. It doesn't mention the input. Oh, interesting. Am I in the wrong space? VI not mentioned. Well, we know from the um, description of the family that can handle um, input levels that are um you know anything under like i think maybe oh yeah negative going threshold so for this it looks like anything above two volts is going to be considered high versus anything that goes below 0.5 volts is negative is uh is low so this is fine um and then honestly you can use this uh let's look at just you know pricing real quickly um the cheapest is going to be the hct 126 or the 125 they're both like about five cents i believe the difference between the 15 the 125 and the 126 is this is a output enable low so you pull it low to enable the output whereas the 126 is output high so the you know this there's just extra pin that you can use to make the output tri-state in this case you know we don't actually use it however it's not a big deal to tie the pin high or low and you're you're stuck with the package anyways like they don't have a four pin sot 23 or sot 70 you can only get it in five pin so given it's extremely popular and available i would just say and you know you're not using the tri-state but maybe you don't want to use a tri-state in some part in the future um the HCT 1G126 or the 1G125 are both going to be great. And like, wow, there are 706,000 stock. Hey, remember when we used to do these and there was like four? <laughs> like we'd actually have to find something that wasn't stock. It's like it's like a distant memory. Um, so 700,000 of these, uh, plenty available for you to do your logic level shifting. And of course, this part is also available in a different packages if you want like again i want to sot 353 but if you are looking for different um package sizes it's also available in um sot 235 so a bigger version is available as well also for about like seven cents a piece um from a variety of vendors uh so this part hold on the 74 HCT 1G126 is my choice for the great search. That's a great search. Where